All right, greetings. Um, since we had, by the way, the bulb got fixed. They, when when I said the the light burned out, they said it did not burn out; it blew up. <laughs> well, whatever. And I'm glad nobody was hurt or or um, anything like that or startled. You know, in this day and age of duck and cover while you're in class, you know, things like that can be traumatic, maybe. But anyway, uh, the. Uh, I was just going to go ahead and finish the lecture because we had about, we had a good 30 minutes to go. So I've put together, I'm going to put together like these two little 10 to 12 minute videos so that we can, um, I can say that we completed class and we can move on. And I'll post these on, uh, hell, I'll probably send them as an email and put them on Canvas because I know sometimes getting documents off Canvas can be a pain in the rear. All right. So, all right. So we're we're going to just look at some. Uh, static equilibrium problems. We're going to keep things from rotating. And um, and here's the first step. Determine whether or not the system is in static equilibrium. This means that there it's not it's not turning and it is not um, it's not uh, moving in a straight line in any way. Okay. So in other words, all the forces on it equal to zero. All of the uh, all the the torques on it are equal to zero. And so, therefore, it is in static uh, equilibrium. Then, guess what? We have to draw. Yes, they're back. Just when you thought it was safe to come out of the water, free body diagrams. Oh, my God. Shoot me now. But anyway, we're going to keep everything in, in two. We're not going to put anything on angles. That's when it starts to get a little bit tricky. Um, and we're going to solve the problem. You set, set up the net force is equal to zero, the net torque equal to zero. Then you check your solution to see if it's reasonable or not. Okay, um, so anyway, so let's keep scrolling because I was going to do this problem. All right, so here's here's a guy. He's in perfect equilibrium. Okay, he's he's holding the pull bolt. Notice his his right hand um, is the the right side is is the forces holding it up. Left force is holding it up. And so center mass is right here. Now, before he starts to run, though, um, and notice what happens when he puts the center of mass closer to his, uh, to his right hand, the force goes up, right? The weight stays the same, but notice this force is greater because it takes greater torque. It takes a greater force to create the same amount of torque as this one. If he drops this hand, then it just spins like that, correct? It'll just spin. All right, or if he drops this hand, it will spin like this. All right, um, so and let you know, there's a, unless he applies a certain torque with his thumb, you know, to offset it. But since this is force times lever arm, this torque, he's got to have a stronger force because the lever arm is sure is smaller. All right, so we're going to look at this problem where he's getting ready to do his run. All right, so now he's got he, this one; it's resting in his palm. Okay, it's resting in his palm, and the, the center of mass weight is pulling down here, which is making this end, since this is resting on his palm, if he took this hand away, if he took this hand away, it would just flip over, like that. Okay, it would just flip, all right? But since he's got it, since he's got his hand, now this is palms down, all right? And so what we're going to do, here's, here's the diagram, and what we're going to do, here's the problem. For the situation shown in figure 920, A, we're going to determine the force on the right hand, then we're going to determine the force on the left hand, and that's what we're going to do. All right? If um, the force is extended by the right hand, so um, from the force exerted by the left hand, the hands are 0.9 centimeters apart. So this is 0.9 centimeters, and um, and the center of gravity of the pole is 0.6 centimeters from the left hand. So they are, yeah, well, the picture's off. This should probably be 0.9, and these two should be 0.6, but that's not what they're doing. They're saying this is 0.9 distance, and this is 0.6. Okay, so I'm going to draw that for us. If I can find my pen. Here it is. All right, and we'll just... Um, Take it from here. I'm going to draw it here, then I'll show you the picture, and then we're going to solve it. Okay? So we go. We've got center mass coming down here. Wait. Uh, 
Did they give us the mass of the pole? That's probably earlier. I probably should have looked this up earlier. I'm sorry that I didn't. Five kilograms. The uniform the pole has a mass of five kilograms. I was gonna say, I need that. I need that dog. All right, so there we go. So the mass of the pole is five kilograms. Good. Good. So we got that. Uh, center of gravity. So we're gonna put, we're gonna assume we're gonna make the mass all be right here. Engineers go, no, 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 no. You've got all kinds of forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hush. All right. This will get us good enough. All right. So Weight's coming down. Five poles, five kilograms. Okay, we've got force one. Force of the left hand is going up here. Force of the right hand is going down here to keep it from flipping up in the air. And we're done. Okay, let me put in the the units, and then we'll be good. So I've got uh, 0 0.6 meters. 0.5 meters, 0.9 meters. And we're done. All right. So here's what we got. Here's what we got. Okay. And now, force on the left, I don't know. Force of the right hand, I don't know. All right. The weight, I do know. Center of gravity, the weight is equal to 5 times 9.8 because it's a 5 the mass is 5 kilograms okay so the weight is equal to 5 is equal to 5 times 9.8 and that is going down all right so now how the heck are we going we got to do two problems basically so do you want to solve for the for the left hand first or the right hand first let's solve for the right hand let's solve for the right hand first Okay, so in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my pivot. I'm going to move my pivot point to here. Okay, so first step, they don't tell you this. Pick a pivot point, and what that pivot point means, that's where you're going to calculate your torques. For, that's the point where you're going to calculate your torques. Okay, that's where you calculate your torques. Whoop, let me get that out of the way. All right, so that's the point where you calculate your torques. And go ahead, say it one more time. That's the point where you calculate. So let's pick a pivot point, and we're going to pick it right here at F2. We picked it at F2 because that takes it out of the problem. Okay? That takes it out of the problem for right now. So then some of the forces are equal to zero which will equal uh, minus FR. I like to do sums all the way through. So I, so instead of saying uh, FL plus F, you know, it's minus FR because that's the direction of it. The magnitude is FR, the direction is going down. Plus FL minus uh, the weight, okay, which we will plug in later. That is equal to zero. All right, well, dang it, two, two unknowns, one equation. Infinite number of solutions. Ha! Now let's look at the sum of the torques. Sum of the torques are equal to zero. Now, since I'm picking the pivot point at F2, what's the torque created by F2? The torque created by F2, I'll, I'll just tell you. The torque created by F2, or FL, it looks like it too, from, at, the, at FL is equal to zero. Why? No lever arm. That's the beauty of it. There's no lever arm. So that's why I picked that point. So now I look at the sum of the torques around that point. So I've got 0 0.9 times FR. And that one will rotate it this way, which is counterclockwise. So that's a positive one. Even though the force is going negative, that's a positive torque. So I've got FR times um, 0.9 minus because that's torquing that minus 5 times 9.8 times 0. 0.6 
Aha! So now I know that, uh, well, let me go ahead and calculate 5 times 9.8. This might be a little bit longer video. That's 0.6. This is equal to 29.4. So when I take 5 times 9.8 times 0.6, I wind up with FR times 0.9 minus 29.4 meter newtons. Remember, this is this is torque. All right. And so then I'll take the force in the right hand times 0 0.9, this is equal to zero, is equal to 29.4 meter newtons, okay? 29.4 meter newtons, newton, meter newton, newtons, newtons. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my mark. Now divide by 0 0.9, and we get 32.7. Force of the right hand is 32.7 newtons. Okay, so now I can do the sum of the forces in the in the in the y direction. Really, they're all going in. A, you, you still got to stay with in your current, but some of the forces acting are now negative 32.7 plus the force in the left hand minus five times 9.8. 49, that is all equal to zero, so FL is equal to uh, 32.7 plus 49, which is equal to 81.7 newtons. Okay? I did not look ahead to see if this was the correct answer. This... I, I figured it was a, it was safe because if it doesn't work, then I can just redo it. But let's see what their answer is. There, looks like we're on to, we're on to something here. What? I got eight more for the. Why is that? That's wrong. Or do I have it? This is just wrong. Some of the forces. That's that's just wrong. That is just freaking wrong. It's not even how they drew the freaking forces. Okay, I'm right. This is wrong. I'm glad we did that. All right. <laughs> that made me mad. They're wrong. Their their actual thing is wrong. I gotta show that to my to my compatriot uh, Dr. Willis. Okay, sorry, but I'm right. I know I am. I know I am. They are so wrong, it's not even funny. All right, so.